Hello everybody, people of the world. My name is Sunyo and I'm here to celebrate with you the birthday of my venerable teacher, Ajahn Brahm. Ajahn Brahm has always been a, a big inspiration for me since I was still a teenager. I was looking on the internet on instructions on how to be more peaceful in life because I used to have a little bit of insomnia because I was thinking so much uh, when I was about 15 years old thinking a lot about all sorts of stuff and I couldn't fall asleep because of that and I knew there was such a thing as meditation I looked it up on the internet and I found many kinds of instructions but the one that stuck me the, that uh, inspired me the most and that stuck with me were the instructions by Ajahn Brahm and I've been practicing meditation ever since uh, and it's been really life-changing. I feel so much more peaceful now and it's been so life-changing that I lost all my hair and lost all my normal clothes and wearing this now <laughs> and just like uh, Ajahn Brahm he also uh, was changed through meditation which has made him into the person he is. Uh, he wasn't born as an inspiring uh, teacher, wasn't born as a wise monk, he was born as a, just a normal person, just like all of us. And, but through the meditation, that is what changed him. So today I will also teach you some meditation, so you can also get some of that peace and happiness that people experience through meditation. And I was asked to do specifically metta meditation. And also was asked to do this uh, with uh, as gratitude as and sort of a dedication to Ajahn Brahm. And I thought it was a wonderful idea to dedicate meditation to our teacher because he has often said that what he wants the most out of his students is not he doesn't need any gifts or any physical help or things like that no it doesn't need more the monastery doesn't need more money Ajahn Brahm has everything he wants and uh, all, all, the, all the physical stuff that life can give him, all the food, he, he doesn't really want that anyway out of, out of us. What he really would like us to do is to practice the path and to get all the beautiful states of peace and kindness and insight and all those beautiful states that the Buddha talked about to experience those for ourselves and therefore it's a wonderful thing I believe that we meditate together as a gift to our teacher so I will guide you through some metta meditation and you may have seen other metta meditations before on this uh, on this website, I'm not sure how it's going to work, but there will be other monks and nuns, and maybe other lay people as well teaching. So you will probably already know a lot about meta meditation, uh, but I can 
give you a little uh, different way of looking at it, or my way of looking at it. The meta meditation, it's basically it is. Uh, you can't describe in words really what metta is. We often translate it as something like loving kindness uh, or friendliness or something like that. But to me, metta is really like the feeling of of love and acceptance of allowing things to be and opening up to them with a loving, a warm heart. And I say opening up to things because metta, you can feel this feeling of acceptance not only towards people or animals, but also just towards your whole situation in life or specific things that are happening or towards specific parts of your body anything really you can feel this kindness towards <laughs> one day I was uh, washing the cars in the monastery and uh, a monk walked by and I asked that monk ah do you also feel so much metta towards cars when you wash the cars <laughs> Because I was really feeling meta towards the cars. And it sounds a bit stupid, but and the monk also thought it was a bit stupid because the way he looked at me, I could tell that he thought it was stupid. But it's not stupid because meta is just, it doesn't need an object even. Yeah, if you can feel it towards cars, you can also just feel it in general. Like the Buddha says at the end of the meta sutta, whether you're walking, standing, or sitting or whatever you're doing, you can always have the feeling of love and kindness uh, in your heart, in your mind. And that's when I think metta becomes the most powerful, when you have it with you all the time, or at least as a lot of the time. Because then whatever happens to you, somebody may annoy you, get angry throughout the day. You may not be meditating at that moment, but you still carry this feeling of, of love and acceptance towards anything. So including that person that may annoy you, and you won't react out of anger or annoyance. You'll react peacefully and kindly. And that is what I think really separates good meditators from others is not just what they do inside the meditation but also how they carry it outside of their meditation so metta can be something that comes all by itself that's what i'm trying to tell you you don't need to really force it well if you force it it will definitely won't work but you don't often don't even need to encourage it, it just comes if you are prepared and if you are open to it. I remember last range retreat, range retreat we do as monks, we spend three months in the same place and meditate uh, there. And uh, we, in this monastery, Bodhinyana, Ajahn Brahm has interviews with the monks uh, that are living in the monastery, it's like every couple of weeks or so we just have a little interview and he asks how you're doing and you can ask your meditation questions and I remember Ajahn Brahm asking me last range retreat are you doing a lot of metta meditation I think he felt it and I said yes because I can't help it whenever I sat down at that time I even without setting any any object for my meditation or any goals, I just felt the metta coming up all by itself. And often, when you let the metta come up by itself, it's so much more pure, so much more yeah, natural in a way, uh, compared to when you 
when you try and force it, then when you try all these recollections of may I be happy, may they be happy, it's all help, very, very good, helpful, but just to let the metta do its own thing, that is, I find, even more powerful than that. And I hope to give you a little bit of a, a guided meditation in a sense for that. But it's hard to do a guided meditation when the basic instruction is just to let things just come up. <laughs> Because there's nothing much to uh, to do or guide you in. So I will do a little bit of instruction on how to spark the feeling of metta, how to spark the feeling of this loving acceptance, this warm feeling inside of you. But after that I will just shut up and just let the metta just do its own thing because it's a little bit like you light a fire in the beginning when you have, have all the tinder together and you put the small branches on top and then the bigger branches I, I know because I used to light the fire here in the monastery uh, uh, when I was still a lay person uh, then in the beginning when you light the fire you have to put some yeah, you have to put some spark or a match in it and blow it a little bit, blow it, maybe wave with, the, with the, some kind of a piece of paper that always helps. So in the beginning you encourage it, but very quickly the meta will, or sorry, the fire, which is a synonym for the meta, will just burn all by itself and it will grow bigger and bigger and bigger and you don't need to do anything anymore. You don't need to encourage the fire anymore. And it's the same with metta meditation. Once you reach a certain point, and there can be very quickly, just like with the fire, you can light it very quickly with metta also. When you reach that point, you just let it do its own thing and it will grow and grow and grow and become more brighter, more warm. And it's just it's just the best thing <laughs> I find to, to do metta meditation like that. It's really amazing. Uh, yeah. So let's do a little bit of that together uh, in dedication to Ajahn Brahm, but also not just Ajahn Brahm, he doesn't really need much of our dedication anymore. It's, uh, they asked me here to wish him a long life, but no, I think he has had a life uh, well spent already. and. I'm not sure if he even wants to <laughs> become very, very old. But we will spread some metta to Ajahn Brahm. Uh, and, uh, but also to all the other people in the world who uh, might need it much more actually than Ajahn Brahm. So let's just begin by closing our eyes. Finding a nice and comfortable position to sit in. I'm going to cross my legs here, although I'm sitting on a chair. Just take your time to find a nice position that's important. So you can just sit for, I think we'll sit for about 40 minutes or so more. So. Just so you don't get any pains or aches. Make sure you just sit nicely. This is also a part of, of kindness, of metta, you have to have also kindness towards your body, it's important also. So when you find a nice position, just take a moment just to arrive in the present moment, arrive in your body. Let yourself know that this is the time for meditation.
lot of things you might have to do later. You will do them later, not now. You won't, don't need to think about them now. Best thing you can do with your time right now is just to be in the present moment. No worries about the future. No regrets about the past. Just be here. Just allow whatever is happening in the present moment just to be. You can't change it anyway, it's already arrived in the present. So just accept it. Open your heart to it. Right now it's a little bit hot in here because I think somebody put on the heater before me and I usually wouldn't do it but it's too late now to turn it off so but I am at peace with that, it can be hot, that's alright. Hot, cold, whatever. So just relax your body. Like I am getting at ease with the heat in here, you just get at ease with whatever your body is feeling. In order to relax your body, you have to accept, embrace, have metta towards whatever is happening in it. You have to do that first before it can relax. So, just accept lovingly accept whatever happens in your body, whatever aches or pains or discomfort there may be. Just let them be. And you might notice that just by accepting, embracing your body, it will start to relax. You don't make this happen. The body does it all by itself. So just take your time to relax your body and your mind to become as it were, one with the present.
and then stick the ear in. No expectations about how this meditation is going to be. No fear about it, just be in present. And because I have been talking about this metta, this loving embrace feeling, because I've been talking about that before, I can already feel it, it already, while I was talking about it, I already felt it quite strongly. But this is also because I have also practiced this a lot in my life. So for you, you might need some more uh, more kindling for the fire of metta. So in case you don't feel any metta yet, just imagine somebody or maybe some animal that you are close to and that you really that you love don't love in like a sensual way but just a really really good friend that person could also be your, yourself you can be your own friend And you can actually imagine that person. Just wish them, mentally wish them happiness. Just wish them all the best in life. So they don't suffer. They don't have any problems. Person, may you be happy or dear animal. May you be happy. May you be at peace. Do this in whatever way it works. I give you words to describe this, but I myself don't do it with words. I just imagine the person and imagine them giving them happiness without words. But do whatever works for you, you can use words can use imagination throughout this series of talks there will be many different instructions given that you can use use whatever to bring up this feeling of metta of kindness in your heart it's where people usually feel it around their heart but you can also really you can feel it anywhere When, once you've got a little spark of this, just encourage it by just diving into it, focusing on it. Forget about the person or animal, but just focus on the meta itself. Sending loving kindness to the loving kindness. Have you ever tried that? Here you can give it a try. And just like lighting a fire can create an inferno 
blazing fire. So too, just sending loving kindness to loving kindness creates the huge powerful feeling. Just kindness, that's all there is. Find whatever way just to brighten this fire inside. Brighten the feeling of metta, whatever works. And soon you'll reach a point where it's just self-sustaining. You don't need to do anything anymore. You just need to only just watch the fire. You want just to watch the meta. That's all you need to do. So with those instructions, I'll leave you now for another half an hour or so something like that, 20 minutes and I'll find it hard to talk now so I'll also continue meditating for those 20 minutes you know, with you and after that I will slowly bring you out of the meditation but for now, just enjoy, just enjoy the love and kindness. And just be happy.
it might be that from time to time the feeling of metta fizzles out or you forget to focus on it and just re-encourage it again very very gentle you probably only need a slight remembrance just to focus on it and bring the feeling back you don't need to do much so if that happens if the feeling of metta sometimes disappears just relight it re-encourage it and can just continue I'll now shut up for about 20 more minutes and then I'll guide you out of this meditation
we're coming to the end of our meditation together and maybe about 20 minutes maybe a bit more maybe a bit less the editor will cut it this video to be the right length but anyway let's just give one more big boost of meta meditation and spread spread the feeling of kindness to everybody in the world all beings in the universe may they all be happy and at ease So, we're coming to the end of our meditation together and maybe about 20 minutes, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less the editor will cut it, this video to be the right length but anyway Let's just give one more big boost of meta meditation and spread, spread the feeling of kindness to everybody in the world, all beings in the universe. May they all be happy and at ease. May nothing bad ever happen to them. It's very unlikely that that will happen, but it's the intention that matters. So wishing everybody everything. All the best. With a loving heart. And then this feeling of love we have developed throughout this meditation sort of lock it inside of you as if you open up your heart put in the meta close your heart back up again so the meta is always there ready always there in the background and you can pull it out whenever you need it or like it so make an intention just to keep the meta with you throughout the rest of the day so you won't fall into anger or annoyance but instead Or just loving, embracing, and kind. So 
So it's time to get out of meditation. I'm going to ring a bell three times. And at the third bell, please open your eyes and then afterwards we'll close up. Meditation is the best, really amazing. You can do such good things for your mind and your body as well. I noticed with my body changing, becoming more peaceful as well. Even though I didn't set out my meditation to do that, it just happens. When you just let things develop naturally, when you let the matter just develop as I have teaching you everything will just relax and you will just be at ease with everything maybe just not don't single out Ajahn Brown as the only special person who is deserving of the metta just everybody is as deserving of our kindness of our love everybody is special everybody is wonderful and I'll leave you with those thoughts and happy birthday to everybody.